here with Dana Cavalea, the former head of strength and conditioning for the New York Yankees. And we are going to do a couple of hard hitting questions. But before we get into that, you have a new book. What is the book about? The book is called Habits of a Champion Team. So it's really a, it's a book about high performance teamwork, how to work together, but most importantly, how to lead a team by first being a stronger you, right? So it's if, you're, if you don't have the strength and you don't have the power and you don't have the mindset to lead, how are you going to lead a team? So that's- All right. Well, let's get straight into that, which was the topic of my email to you, which was like, how do you know when to push an athlete and when to pull back with that athlete in terms of coaching? How do you, how do you know when to recognize, hey, listen, suck it up. You need to keep on pushing versus, okay, chill out. You actually do need to rest. Yeah. Well, you know, the longer you work with an athlete, you start to read their body language. You start to understand what it is that they're putting out there. That's why I always say to everybody, listen, you should have a coach. You got to have a coach in your corner. So you can have a skill coach. You could have a business coach. You could have a coach that's there just to motivate you, whatever it is, but have somebody or some bodies there on your team that could recognize behavior changes that you can't recognize. So, a typical guy, let's say somebody like you or somebody in, in private equity or finance, you know, these are typically hard charging individuals. They're freight trains. There's goal. Let me go at it harder and faster than the average, you know, guy or gal. The problem is that intensity has such a, um, there, there's limitations to that intensity. You'll always typically find a way to get to goal, but you may get there beat up, burnt out, and exhausted. So if you have somebody next to you that can help you manage your workload and, and you know, in the world of strength and conditioning and performance, we, we use what's called an undulated periodization model where there's weeks of hard work and there's weeks of light work. There's weeks of hard work and there's weeks of light work. Now, again, we're talking to a high performance community here. Uh, coach, I don't know if I like light work. I'm a hard goer all the time. But what I found is when you take these hard charging individuals and you help them to understand what their long-term and short-term training model looks like, they then have understanding and then they have more of a willingness to say, oh, this is my download week. This is a week where I pull back. Yep. I put my efforts into massage, uh, into hot water soaks, into different therapeutics, electroacupuncture, uh, more mindset work this yep. week. But next week, I'm ready to oh. go again. You know, so. that's awesome. And, and there are a couple of things, you know, we've, we've known each other for a couple of years. And when, you know, we were almost on a, what a weekly basis <laughs> yeah. when I was in a, um, a really rough time during transition, the first part you, of you, you were in, we'll call it, maybe we'll call it fat camp. Fat camp. There we go. That is, a, <laughs> that is an appropriate uh, characterization. <laughs> um, but one of the things that this is really making me think about now that I've had another coach come into the mix. So mental strength when we're, when we're working together, but also now I have like an endurance coach specifically for triathlon, specifically for marathon. And one of the fascinating things that I learned to your point about periodization is when you're training for a marathon or an Ironman, you have your buildup phase, you have your taper phase. When you're done with the season, you have an off season. Now, one of the things that directly makes me think about for our business and the other firms out there in the M&A community, the private equity firm is what periodization have you built in so that the team sees something besides Christmas as a, a time of rest? Yeah. You know, what, what are these other times that we can build into the calendar so the team knows, hey, we got to sprint for this amount of weeks to get to this. And then our big race is whatever this deal is. Yeah. Well, the truth, well, the truth is this, you know, most people in those communities in the deal-making community, private equity, whatever venture, whatever it may be. Right. Cause I, that's, that's who I work a lot with is teaching them how to develop habits and routines and how to balance and create a schedule. So your year is pretty much, we, we have a good idea as to what our year is going to look like. And what I say is this, you know, July and August are typically going to be months. They're a little bit more relaxed, laid back. These are what I call like where Hamptons deal making or Montauk deal making may take place. The month of December, there may be a hard sprint in the first two weeks and then there's a pullback. So right there, you got two weeks there, you got eight weeks in the summer. 
And you have to find these spots throughout the year where you could have what I call micro off seasons. So in sports, we have in season. First, we have preseason. Then we have in season. Then we have off season. And then we have our training season. So at the end of the day, how can you use an overlay of a sports model and put it into your business model? So you're not sprinting all the time and saying, I'm burnt out. I'm fatigued. I need some kind of an upper to get myself going. And then I can't sleep at night. So I need something to bring me back down. And CBD is just not doing it. So <laughs> we have to find a way to, you, to look at our year strategically and say, hey, when I'm, in, when I'm around a deal, this is typically where I'm at around a deal. But after that deal, I got to pull back. So you yeah. have to have these micro off seasons throughout your year. Well, I, I think to the, when you look at the past year and record breaking deal volume, mm-hmm. people were, it, it's 24 seven, there was no micro off season. But then what happens is that when you get done with the end of the year and bonus season, then, and then, you know, people collapse mentally, they're like, what did I get out of this? Well, like, well, I, there's, I, also, there's also this second part too, within, within this community, right? Because now there, there's a lot of deals that are happening on Zoom. So I don't have to travel as much, but there's a lot more digital engagement. And I think a lot of individuals are saying, well, I don't have to travel, so I don't have that fatigue on me. But they've actually added a different kind of mental fatigue by being on Zoom and go rolling from one meeting to the next, to the next, to the next. And this is a community that's not typically used to using Zoom over and over and over again as their primary mode of interaction. You know, this is a jump on a plane, have a, have a meal, have a few drinks, do a deal, and we'll see you as we progress here. So there's that too that we have to always think about. So we've covered some very important ground in some very short time, and this is exactly what I wanted to dive into. <laughs> but if you want more, there is a book that you can take a look at. If you wouldn't mind, put it up again just so everyone can see it. Here we go. All right, Habits of the Champion. Check it out. Dana Cavalier, awesome to see you. Thanks, Jordan. everything.